WhatsApp me. It ain't as in psychology. You see, every time my lips touch, she taught me how to care. She's a scene stolen, mind blowing. No other woman I know. She's a real deal kind of woman I love. Sometimes I wonder what it is about her that keeps me weak at the heart. Cause every time she leaves, I just lose control. Good morning, men. Welcome to Men's Roundtable. Thanks for tuning in. I'm glad you're here. We come to you again this week uh, live remotely as we continue our physical distancing because of the coronavirus. Phil will be joining us shortly from the training room at Ceasefire. And uh, like I said a couple of weeks in a row, I can't wait for all of us to be back in that room. And until that day, we're gonna continue in the series uh, In the Wilderness. He'll be teaching on that again in just a few minutes when he joins us with Jeff Cook and Jeff Stout. Guys, I'm just tickled that you're here. Uh, I really am glad. Uh, I hope you had a great Memorial Day weekend. I know I enjoyed watching the World War II movies and reliving some of that. Uh, one of the things that came out of it that I thought was really interesting to me, especially during this time, was a uh, speech of Wilson's when he asked, what do we have to fear other than fear itself? Fear. Being in the wilderness creates a lot of fear and anxiety. And we've talked about that, how you've handled it, what you're going through, what we're facing, fear. I know at times I'm certainly concerned, afraid. Uh, I would say that fearful and anxiety are two things that I've tried to keep in check. Uh, I hope that you're reaching out to brothers if you find yourself fearful and filled with anxiety. Someone that's maybe more mature in that area that can walk along with you, help you through this rough time. Those that have lost family members, those that have been sick, lost jobs, gone without paychecks. It's tough, it's tough. Guys, I, um, I wanna take just a second and say a special prayer this morning. Before I do that, I'd like to reach out to Tim Atkinson and his wife, Denise, up in the Memphis area. Tim starts his um, cancer treatments again today, this morning, uh, for pancreatic cancer that is now spread to the liver area. He had a biopsy done a few weeks ago and he starts chemo um, this morning. I know he needs prayers from us. Denise does as well. Uh, a group of about 25 of us went up two years ago in May and uh, had a night out on his patio, anointed him with oil, prayed over him, and I know it had an impact on his life. And I know at this time, Tim is afraid, fearful, anxious, but at the same time, I've heard Tim and I know Tim knows who his Savior is, who God is, who his Lord is. And I know he walks in that knowledge today as he goes into the hospital to start chemo treatments again. Denise posted yesterday a picture of a rainbow that she saw on her way home when she felt like she was alone and she knew God was with her. I hope you see God in his beauty, 
and he comforts you. Let me open this with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the grace that you give us, for the strength that you give us, for the knowledge and the understanding that you've revealed to us. Lord, I pray that you would be with Denise and Tim this morning as he begins his treatments. I pray you would be with the medical staff. Allow them to use the skills and knowledge that they have to help Tim conquer this cancer. Allow him to heal, Lord, if it's your will. I know Tim has accepted whatever your will is, he will be fine with. Selfishly, Lord, I pray that you would make him whole. I miss my brother. I wish he was with us this morning. Thank you for Phil, for Jeff, Jeff, and for Chris putting together our papers every week. Lord, we raise Tim and Denise and the medical staff this morning. In your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you uh, virtually. Um, I love being here in the training room and closing my eyes and seeing you uh, sitting here. And I agree with Joe uh, that I look forward to the day uh, that I don't have to close my eyes to see you, uh, but that we can be together uh, again. Man, there'll be some hugging going on that day. So uh, don't let us in this room until there's hugging going on. I uh, look forward to that. Uh, I want to offer you a song this morning um, by Third Day. Um, and um, I'm loving the playlist that we've put together. I, I, hope, uh, I hope you're using it. I hope you're utilizing it. If not that playlist, a playlist, uh, because music uh, is the language of our heart. It awakens our heart, uh, and that's why we use it here um, every Thursday morning when we begin. Um, and even though this song is by Third Day, uh, Third Day will not be singing the version that we'll be listening to. But this is their song, and because of YouTube restrictions, uh, Jeff's come up with another way for us to listen to it. But the, but the version that will be on the playlist on Spotify, which is uh, entitled Into the Wilderness, will be by Third Day. Let me read to you the words uh, of the song, Your Words. Let me hear your words above all other voices, above all the distractions in this world. Let me hear your words above all the voices, above all the distractions in this world, for your words bring life and your voice speaks promises. Lord, your love offers more than anything else in this world. Amen and amen. May you hear the voice of God and may it prepare your heart uh, for our time together this morning. Love that never fails, everything else. 
hopes will fade away But what will remain are your words Let me speak your words More than us, more than ever Let us share your love with all the world Everything else will fade away, but what will remain? No, oh, your words give us life that's never ending. Oh, your words bring us love that never fails. Everything else will fade away, but what will remain are your words. Amen. Amen. And um, I trust, again, that you will go to our Spotify uh, playlist uh, and hear the same uh, song sung by uh, Third Day, uh, Powerful Words, Your Words by Third Day. Be on the alert. Stand firm in your faith. Act like men. Be strong. The words from 1 Corinthians sixteen thirteen. We continue uh, in our series, Into the Wilderness, uh, as we are, Into the Wilderness. Worldwide pandemic, uh, never thought, never imagined that we would ever be here, uh, but we are. And um, we are listening for the voice of God um, every day. Follow with me as we read our introductory paragraph. Into the Wilderness, Understanding and Embracing the Dark Times of our life. Words translated as wilderness occur nearly 300 times in the Bible. Wilderness seasons are brutal, but God is powerfully at work in the wilderness seasons of our lives. The only question is, do we have eyes to see it, or maybe better said, ears to hear it? In order for God to give us the choice whether or not to trust Him, He must present us with a moment of crisis, and since he wants to seek us to seek help from him, he brings us through the wilderness to remove all other help first. When we're in a wilderness season, it's easy to lose sight of God's protection, provision, and preparation. We might even wonder, how can I trust God's goodness when I'm in this desolate place? But remember Jesus. He went through the ultimate wilderness, the desolation and humiliation of dying under the curse of God. If that is the measure of God's love and commitment to us, we can trust him in our own wilderness seasons. Let us continue to journey together. This morning, um, we want to look at um, the idea of I receive, I receive. Last week, uh, we covered Exodus 19. And in Exodus 19, uh, God establishes the covenant with Moses, the Mosaic covenant. 
He had previously established the Noahic covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, and now the Mosaic covenant. He'll follow it up a few years later with the Davidic uh, covenant, and then, of course, Christ fulfills the covenant. In the covenant, um, I suggested to you last week that there's three responses. Um, it's like a wedding. There's three responses to the covenant. When God pledges um, his commitment to us through a covenant, he expects us, he wants us to respond with I do because he is pledging to be with us and he's asking that we would pledge um, our affection to him. When I have the opportunity to do a wedding, I follow the uh, covenantal path as I perform the ceremony. And early on in the wedding, we get that uh, response uh, from the bride and groom, I do. I do pledge my affection to you in the same way that God asked the children of Israel to pledge their loyalty to him. And then the second part of the covenant and this is what we're looking at uh, today, is I receive. Because the second part of the covenant is God giving the Ten Commandments. And in uh, Exodus 20 that we're going to read here in, uh, in just a minute, God lays out the, the Ten Commandments. And the response that he wants from the children of Israel is I receive. And when I do a wedding, after the couple has said I do, then I give a charge to the husband, and I give a charge um, to the wife, or to the uh, bride, and or to the groom, and to the bride. And I hope and I expect that they will receive those instructions as a guide to how uh, to be a better uh, marriage partner, to be a better spouse. And they respond after the charge. I receive. And that's what we're looking at today. And finally, just uh, to reiterate what we talked about last week, the third part of the covenant is the execution um, of all the instruction. And God expects that everything from the sacrifices to just the daily obedience of uh, walking with God, the response would be, I will. I will. I will execute that which you ask God. So the covenant is I do, I receive, I will. So turn over to Exodus 20 and let's look in greater depth at I receive. Um, and before we actually read the passage, I have three questions for you. So pick up your pen and engage with me. Um, I receive. The first question that I would ask you, what is difficult for you about receiving instructions? Are you a good instruction receiver? Or are you one of those guys who takes the TV or the uh, uh, play uh, toy out of the box, throws the directions away, and just dives in? Instructions? Who needs instructions? Hand me a screwdriver and a pair of pliers and some duct tape. We'll get this done. But the idea of receiving instructions um, is an act of humility. I don't know. I need instruction. It is the honoring of boundaries. If, ever been with somebody who could not receive instruction, and therefore did not honor your boundaries? Um, they didn't ask you what you would like. They didn't ask you what love meant to you. Um, they just started running in the direction that they wanted to run in, and they expected you to follow. Being with a person who can't receive instruction uh, is very difficult. Um, and typically, a person who has um, 
a, a, a difficulty with receiving instruction is pretty self-absorbed. Um, in my book, um, Lions Were Born to Roar, we call that the bull. Um, you know, he does not need input from anybody, does not receive input uh, from anybody. And he runs in his own path. And the only problem he has is you're not following close enough. So receiving instruction is part uh, of being human, uh, being a godly man, and God expects us to be able to receive that instruction. Second question that I'd ask you to respond to. What frees you to give your best self? What frees you to give your best self? to be the best husband, to be the best employer or employee on the athletic field when you were in high school and college or whatever, even your golf game today, what frees you to play your best game? Um, I think we would all agree on some level that you need to be relaxed. You need to kind of sense that there's some acceptance there if you uh, have this uh, unconscious voice if if not conscious voice uh, talking to you in your head you're doing it wrong you should do this you ought to do that then it's going to inhibit and prohibit your performance um it's like knowing that we really are accepted is what frees us. And that's one of the things that we're going to cover um, this morning is even though God gives the instructions, uh, the rules of engagement, um, I call it, he does it out of grace and acceptance. Third question, who do you know that is in the wilderness now? Um, it's that guy uh, that you saw in the mirror this morning. Exactly who it is. Um, we're all in the wilderness in, in some form. And um, I truly pray for all of us, especially those of us who attend Men's Roundtable, um, that we can genuinely say, uh, as hard as this has been, and it, and it has been hard for everybody in some way, um, that I am more in tune with God, I'm walking with God, and I understand the gospel clearer. I'm certainly doing all that I know how to do in the best way that I know how to do it to try to make it clear, and I'm certainly trying to get clearer in my own heart on that. Uh, because truly, as the song says, uh, it is your words, God, um, that are most important, and they will last for eternity. May we hear the voice of God every day through this wilderness experience. So, back to our passage, Exodus 20. Exodus 20 um, is the giving of the Ten Commandments. And I would, I would just offer you that it's, it's really important to understand that in, in this covenantal um, um, process that God is giving, it is so important to understand that he is giving it out of grace. Um, I mean, imagine this, that God was a God who brought the children of Israel uh, out of Egypt, led them through the Red Sea, miraculously showed his power to them, um, and put them in the wilderness and didn't give them any way to understand what he wanted. He just kept saying, love me, love me, love me. Um, there would be a sense, a very 